Hi there, it's Izilia here from Tax World. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Section 78 of the Taxes Consolidation Act 1997. Section 78 provides that a company's chargeable gains are calculated by considering tax years as accounting periods. These gains are then adjusted to get an amount that, when taxed at the corporation tax rate, results in a tax equal to the hypothetical capital gains tax. The net chargeable gains of a company for an accounting period are taxed after subtracting the losses that are allowed for that period and any losses carried forward. If the accounting period crosses two financial years with different corporation tax rates, an assumed rate is used. This is determined by dividing the rates for the two financial years according to the length of the respective parts of the accounting period in each financial year. Gains from the development of land by a company continue to be taxed under capital gains tax, not corporation tax. The losses that can be deducted are those that occur during the accounting period and those carried forward from earlier years, as long as the company was subject to corporation tax during those years. The calculation of chargeable gains and allowable losses for companies follows the principles of capital gains tax, treating accounting periods as tax years. In the context of capital gains tax principles, any mention of income tax should be understood as referring to corporation tax. However, provisions that apply only to individuals are not included. It's important to note that the application of capital gains tax and corporation tax is independent. The same transaction can have different tax implications for an individual and a company. When a company's assets are transferred to a liquidator, it's not considered a disposal, the actions of the liquidator are seen as those of the company, and transactions between the liquidator and the company involving the company's assets are disregarded. I hope you found that useful, and I'll see you in the next video.